Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono black discard and sacrifice deck featuring a Turgrid, a God of Fright as our commander. Can also be played as Turgrid's Lantern, but for the most part we're trying to leverage the 5 mana 4 5 God with Menace, saying whenever an opponent sacrifices a non token permanent or discards a permanent card, we may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under our control. Now, sadly, Turgrid can't necessarily steal the opponent's commanders once they're dealt with, since those go back to the command zone, but it's still very effective alongside our other discard effects and edict effects, of which there are many. I split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with our mana acceleration, plenty of artifacts to try and play Turgrid ahead of schedule, since it's often at its most effective if we can play our commander and then immediately play a sacrifice effect or a discard spell, so we can hopefully get that immediate value, as opposed to playing Turgrid and having the opponent answer it. Then we've got a large section dedicated to discard spells and ways to maybe synergize with making the opponent discard. Then we've got kind of an overlapping category of ways to both make the opponent discard as well as make them sacrifice creatures. So there's a nice little Venn diagram here with overlapping section. And then we've got our edict effects, ways to make the opponent sacrifice a creature, including planeswalkers that can do so as well. And then finally we've got a few additional removal spells to round out the deck, including a sweeper in Blood on the Snow. And then we've got a few additional card draw effects like Phyrexian Arena and Black Market Connections, just powerful enchantments in a 1v1 format. So now it's time for our deeper dive, starting with the Mana Acceleration, where of course Dark Ritual is also pretty nice, giving us that big mana boost. Then we've got the two mana artifacts, Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the Iron Crag. And then at three mana, Heraldic Banner can name black to pump up some of our smaller creatures. We've got File of Galadriel, also very nice when empty-handed, so we get to draw an extra card. The Celestus gives us a bit of life gain and card selection. Warren Power Stone makes two mana. And then Hedron Archive can also be cast and then still immediately tap for double colorless and maybe cast another two mana artifact or something else. And then a Gilded Lotus, I also like making three mana of any one color. Then we move on to our discard effects, where we've got Hopeless Nightmare, which we can also sacrifice later to scry to. A few targeted discard spells, Inquisition and Thoughtseize. Not playing Duress, even though it's a way to protect Turgrid, since it's less likely to hit a permanent card that we can then put in play with Turgrid, whereas Inquisition and Thoughtseize can also hit creatures. And then we've got various two mana creatures that will make the opponent discard one card when they enter the battlefield. Acquisition's Expert is the best one of them. And then a Burglar Rant. Court Official, Disciple, Informant, and a Virus Beetle all do the same. And then we also have the Raven Man, which is a payoff for making the opponent discard, as we'll get to make a bird token. Can also activate for 4 mana. And then we've got Tiny Bones, which also rewards us for making the opponent discard a card, as we'll get to draw at the cost of 1 life, and also has a nice 6 mana ability if the opponent's empty handed. And then Waste Knot, of course, one of the classic payoffs for any discard deck, giving us zombie tokens, extra mana, or extra cards. Then we've got the Davriel, which we can activate a few times, and once the opponent's empty-handed, this will still drain them for two each turn. Fell Spectre also rewards us for making them discard, losing the opponent to life each time. And then Liliana, Waker of the Dead, can plus to make each player discard, and then a minus three gives us a bit of removal. And then the Deepest Betrayal can also make the opponent discard if it attacks. And then in our overlapping section, there's Extract a Truth, can be a nice answer to posing enchantments on the battlefield, otherwise it's a discard spell for creatures, enchantments, and planeswalkers. Liliana of the Veil can both make the opponent sack a creature as well as make each player discard. Henrika can also do the same. We've got Rankle at 4 mana, especially nice if we've got some cheaper creatures on the battlefield ready to sacrifice. Rankle's Prank can also be quite effective. And then as the Eldest Reborn, we'll start by making the opponent sack a creature or planeswalker, and then on chapter 2 discard a card and eventually get something back from the graveyard. And then moving on to our dedicated sacrifice effects. At one mana there's Innocent Blood, hopefully when we don't have any creatures on the battlefield ourselves. We've got Chainer's Edict that can be flashed back later in the game. And Liliana's Triumph can also turn into a discard spell if we happen to have a Liliana Planeswalker on the battlefield. Shieldred's Edict is quite versatile, especially when dealing with opposing Planeswalkers. Got a Tithing Blade, making the opponent sack a creature, and then we can transform it for 5 mana and get a more powerful artifact. The Demon's Disciple and Playcrafter make the opponent sack a creature or planeswalker when they enter. The Fairy Castle Libation, another answer to enchantments on the battlefield. Then we've got Soul Shatter at instant speed to deal with large creatures and planeswalkers. Gix's Command can be a sweeper, can also gain us some life back by giving us plus one counters and a lifelink until end of turn. Can also get creatures back from the graveyard, so it's quite versatile. 
And then we've got the five mana Shieldred making the opponent sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. Invoke Despair is great if her opponent has enchantment creature and planeswalker to sacrifice. We've got the Dreadhorde General making zombies drawing extra cards, and then of course a minus four making each player sacrifice two creatures. Then Professor Onyx, another edict effect with a minus three, can draw extra cards with a plus while draining the opponent with Magecraft. And finally, Shieldred to Whispering 1, 6-6 six, six with Swampwalk, don't see that very often, making the opponent sacrifice a creature each turn, whereas we get to reanimate a creature from our graveyard each turn. And then we move on to our additional removal, where we've got Bloodsheaf's Thirst, Cut Down, and Fatal Push. Just nice to have some one mana answers so we don't fall behind against aggro. And then a Blood on the Snow is the main reason why we have all these snow covered swamps in our mana base, so we can also get something back from the graveyard in addition to either destroying creatures or all planeswalkers. And then finally we've got Cling to Dust as a way to make use of our graveyard, which we otherwise don't really do, can gain extra life back or draw extra cards. Malaki Rebirth can be a way to protect Turgrid from removal. We've got Deadly Dispute, which is pretty good alongside some of our cheaper creatures that make the opponent discard. And then a Black Market Connections and Phyrexian Arena are pretty powerful card draw enchantments. And then a Graveyard Trespasser for a bit more life gain and Graveyard Hate. Not super synergistic in the deck, unless our opponent tries to target it with a removal spell and then they have to discard to the ward ability, which will then also trigger Turgrid. And then our mana base has of course the 30 snow-covered swamps to enable Blood on the Snow, as well as Faceless Haven, another payoff. Got Cavern of Souls just to make our commander uncounterable. The Sanitarium is especially synergistic, since we can activate it, forcing the opponent to draw and discard, which will play into Turgrid's ability. Mirex can make additional tokens for us to maybe sacrifice. Mutavolt, another powerful creature land. And Nykthos can give us a big mana boost if we happen to have a bunch of black permanents on the battlefield, such as our various enchantments especially. And then a Phyrexian Tower plays well with all the cheaper creatures that make the opponent discard, as we can now sacrifice them to add an extra mana and then Hive as an extra creature land, and Castle Lochthwain as another card draw engine. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Itali, a red-green ramp. Our hand is a little bit lackluster, how do we beat this deck? It's not like we can make them discard their commander, and if we make them sack it, it just goes back to the command zone. So... Maybe our best hope is to just ramp ourselves and find some powerful curve topper to take over. This doesn't quite do that. Alright, so Liliana could be one of those. And uh, Shieldred certainly counts, but we're missing the ramp part. So if they play a creature, we've got it covered with Disciple. And that counts. Next turn we can play Disciple on a tap land, and then set up Turgrid for some powerful 6 and 7 mana plays, hopefully. Opponent's got an answer to our 3-1. So hopefully we're making it hard for them to cast the tally. Bramble Familiar enters with 3 extra power. And uh, now Gilded Lotus also an option. Could be better than Turgrid, although we do have Liliana set up. But Lotus would set up Shield Roots, which is quite tempting here. So our opponent can cast a Tally. At least now if they hit a removal spell, it's not a disaster. Blood on the Snow. Opponent's gonna decline to cast. And the Lunar Elves. Okay. So we can do some powerful things now. Liliana. Sacrifice two creatures, they can keep a tally. So I think we start with Shieldred Whispering One. Opponent does not control a swamp, but they will have to sack a creature. And then we can bring back our Demon's Disciple, perhaps. Ooh, Vorinclex, that's a good one. I 
guess we'll just take 13. And then go for Demon's Disciple. And goodbye Bramble Familiar. And then uh, Dreadhorde General will enter with half the amount of uh, loyalty counters because of Vorinclex. So that's not going to be very effective. But we can play Turgrid alongside File. And then next turn maybe trade for Shieldreds. Can still channel this for two mana and get something back. Although won't be able to get back Shieldred herself. So Tali's gonna go back to the command zone. So sadly don't get to steal it with Turgrid. And a Dracosaur is next. And a halfling. Alright, let's see if they attack. Could now also double block Turgrid and Disciples, her opponent decides not to. Alright, so channeling Abandoned Mire is mostly so we would maybe mill something uh, to get back with Shieldred. Opponent is empty handed, so these are not going to be very effective. So yeah, I guess we might as well. And, uh,. Did not find anything too exciting. So yeah, Liliana just doesn't do much here. I guess we can still play it and plus to make a zombie. Even though it's not going to get any additional loyalty. And then they have to attack it with a Dracosaur. And then hopefully we'll find something useful. Steal the Halfling, opponent finding Kogla and a land. So Kogla's pretty good here. They maybe should have waited to take out Liliana first, so we don't get to draw. And a Chainer's Edict. Opponent goes face. And Liliana draws some more. Alright, feels like we can take over now. With Vorinclex gone, Liliana of the Veil looks great. So let's see. Can I replay Turgrid? Before killing some more stuff. Play Liliana. And then Bloodchief's Thirst the token. Or we can uh, Chainer's Edict. Let's see, can I also cast a Disciple? Maybe start there. Get a free Vivian, don't mind if I do. And then Liliana and Thirst to clean things up. Steal the opponent's Dracosaur. Alright. You know that was pretty satisfying. Now we still have to be a little careful since we're getting low on life here. But uh, let's just plus make a reach creature. Can plus here and attack. And that's enough for a concession. Turgrid takes over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing a mono white life gain deck. And our hand's acceptable. We actually have some good early interaction. And uh, connections to try and take over. Start with a Nightmare. Even though we could save it until after we play Turgrid. That's still pretty far off. Angel of Vitality discarded. 
So now we can go Signet into Innocent Blood. And next turn, play the Connections. Orator is next. Just need to draw more lanes and start making treasure here. And our opponent with a heal lead on three. So draw and make a treasure. Not super interested in the creature. Did not find a land. But we could Inquisition have a look. And then Tithing Blade. Although I would like to get the Guardian Idol down. So maybe for now it's just Idol plus Blade to deal with Orator. Try and mitigate some of the damage. They also have a Faceless Haven, which can be quite relevant. And Johnny's Welcome can synergize with Heliot quite well. Although this might be our last chance to snipe something with Inquisition. I guess we could always uh, discard it to the Rankle Sprank. Nazis. So I can cast Turgrid, but I wouldn't be able to cast a 1 mana discard spell afterwards. So in that case, maybe go for Power Stone plus Inquisition. Alright, take Linden, that's relevant, could have turned on Heliod. But we're still facing quite a lot of damage next turn. Their opponent can turn on Faceless Haven. Goes for Loran, alright. Probably going for a Warren Power Stone now. Power Stone down. So now we're maybe looking to sack two creatures with a Rankle's Prank. I think we still need both modes. Find a Celestis. Yeah, I guess we can Prank and then Liliana's Triumph could be an answer to Faceless Haven. And then Celestis can make up for the life loss from connections at some point. And a beloved princess is next. Yeah, it's actually pretty tricky to block. Alright, we drew the lanes. So I think now I'm reverting to just a treasure. And then we can cast Turgrid. Sadly, can't thought seize myself to get a free virus beetle. It's only opponents. So Princess connects. And Splendor is next, turning on Heliod, which actually plays into Professor Onyx now. Although, opponent's gonna just send it back to the command zone. I will lose Professor Onyx to the Princess attack. So maybe there's a better way to do this. Cast the Celestis. And then Beetle as a Trump blocker. And then next turn, Professor Onyx. Or we can just play the Professor, and then it buys us a full turn while Turgrid attacks. Could also plus, I suppose. But then I'm going to be facing Heliod. Alright, let's hit for four. 
If I cast Thoughtseize now I lose two and so does the opponent, still doesn't seem more worthwhile. Alright, Princess is going face. That's bold. And Authority is next. So we get to untap with Professor Onyx. And a Chainer's Edict is a pretty nice answer. So let's see. Can play Archive, play Celestus, and then still Edict. Which will trigger Professor Onyx. And then now we'll get a lifelinker from Turgrid. And it for four. Alright, feels like we're starting to turn the corner here. Healer's Hawk. We should be able to answer with Edicts, and yeah, opponent explodes. At this point, we can just take over on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Geist of St. Traft. And uh, yeah, having Edict effects is the perfect solution, so Innocent Blood will go a long way. My hand could, of course, improve a little bit if we draw some more lands or mine acceleration, since we're not getting to Blood on the Snow anytime soon. Opponent with Tonos Endurers. Essence Flux, so multiple flicker effects for guys to try and protect it. Flowering, the only card they can kind of cast proactively, but I think we still take something like a Spell Pierce. And then turn to play Informant, hope to cast a Phyrexian Arena on three, and now we don't have to worry about Spell Pierce. And then we can pull ahead with Phyrex in Arena to hit our land drops, and then once they play Geist, we've got the answer. So there's a flowering. And a land, perfect. That can name God to make Turgrid uncountable. There's a Geist. And that's just going to be a juicy target for Innocent Blood. I'll attack first since we're going to lose our Informant anyway. I think I broke my opponent's brain by attacking here. They're maybe going through all the iterations. I guess we could have a Meat Hook Massacre for two if they block. So yeah, opponent takes it. Innocent Blood. And then I guess we can Thought Seize now or we could wait. But uh, opponent's got mostly non-creature spells, so I don't think Thoughtseize is going to combine with Turgrid particularly well. Yeah, let's just take this alchemy card so I don't have to think about it. Aspirant is next. Not bad here. And a Cold Steel Heart and a land. So we do have Blood on the Snow to maybe get back Turgrid if it dies. Although that will require a few more snow lanes. I guess with Cold Steel Heart that's an extra snow source as well. Yeah, maybe we just uh, set a Blood on the Snow, get back a discard effect. Especially if they tap out for a 5 mana Geist. And then we can play Turgrid after casting Blood on the Snow. Alright, kind of crossing my fingers, hoping they play Geist. But they might have different plans. Protect the Aspirants. And a Sanitarium. Yeah, I guess we'll go for Blood on the Snow. And then they'll also have to discard. And then hopefully we'll find another Edict effect for the Geists once they recast it. Uh, 
Okay. It's gonna be a Curse of Silence, naming Turgrit, that I don't mind. Could still cast the uh, Lantern half just for 4 mana, but we can actually cast Turgrit for 7 too. And then Nykthos can give us a mana boost. And we can even play Signet first. And then next turn Sanitarium with Turgrid out is pretty awesome. Opponent does get to draw. Turgrid also encounterable thanks to our cavern. And now Nykthos will give us a bit of extra mana to play with. So the plan is, if we don't draw anything else, Sanitarium activate. And then if they discard a permanent, we'll get to steal it with Turgrid. Opponent not replaying guys, so they're still afraid of an Edict effect, and yeah, they're definitely justified here. So maybe play the Rat first, and then activate Sanitarium. Yeah, this feels like a pretty rough matchup for guys of St. Traft. Can keep Soul Shatter. And then cast a Playcrafter, sacking Burglar Rat. And our opponent discards a Dovin's Veto. Get in for five. Got an instant speed answer to Geist. Opponent's running out of options. Then we can just keep activating Sanitarium just to get value of Turgrid. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and we've stumbled upon the mirror match. Our hand is not great. Only two lands. Take a mulligan. And this one's probably not going to cut it either. Too many expensive cards. Alright, this we can try. And then maybe ditch a Mirax or a Mutavolt in case we draw more colorless sources. And then I'm going to save Nightmare until after we play Waste Knot. So we're a few cards down here. So we need Waste Knot to do some heavy lifting. And already have to discard. Well, I guess the land can go. Our opponent is running fetch lanes, so once we get a Turgrid down, we can also punish those. Collective Brutality can take or invoke Despair. Alright, let's get a Phyrexian Arena down while we can. That can make up for our mulligans. And a Curtains. That's fine. So with Nykthos we can actually go Nightmare into Liliana. And a Playcrafter is not bad either. Could still go for Liliana and then I guess I would discard the Playcrafter. So we maybe prefer just casting it. Although it feels kind of bad when they only Spent one mana casting the curtains. I'll go for Liliana. Plus, and that's gonna trigger Waste Knot again. Making two mana, I guess, not super helpful. Alright, so considering we mulligans, we're not doing too badly. They get to transform curtains to attack Liliana, but they don't get to take anything. So, let's see here. Can play Mindstone, cast Turgrid, and then still plus Liliana. Nykthos is doing overtime. A 
another land gone. Which we get to take. And then... Can either sack Mindstone or Nightmare or both. I guess we'll start with Mindstone. And an Edict. Why not? Well, that was a blowout. Steal it with Turgrid. Yeah, if you looked at these two board states, you wouldn't think we were the ones that mulliganed. Opponent does have the Invoke Despair to their credit. But we've got plenty of things we can sacrifice. And we're still in great shape. Even get to Scry 2. Raven Man doesn't look all that great here, to be fair. Alright, Deadly Dispute missing something to sack to it. Opponent is top decking and finds a burglar right. We do have an edict we can always flash back, so I guess uh, yeah, if we cast edict they can just sack the rat. So maybe let go of the dispute. Cut down also an answer to the rat, and how about a Liliana? Okay, play Liliana plus... And they've already cast our Invoke Despair. So I don't really see them coming back. And yeah, this game also showcased the value of Nykthos, especially alongside our enchantments. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Calyx, guided by fate. So another matchup where having early removal is important. Libation even getting rid of enchantments specifically. Oof, turn on Kami's annoying since that kind of gets in the way of our edict. And having to fatal push it feels bad. But yeah, opponent's got to turn to Calyx already. So I'm probably gonna end up pushing the Kami and then edict deals with Calyx. Extract the Truth can make them sack an enchantment too. Um, so it's kind of a decision here. Maybe keep Edict for later, since we still have Libation for enchantment specifically. And if they play a Planeswalker, I might want Edict. Alright, speaking of Planeswalkers... Calyx Destiny's Hand can immediately provide a bit of card advantage, finding a borrowed time. So our opponent's definitely ahead. Now they got a nice 2 for 1. We're just trying to keep up. But now Davriel looks okay. Makes him discard and then... They can't finish it off with an attack from Pilgrim. If they use Borrowed Time, I'm okay with it. Never mind, Reprieve to counter it. So now they could replay Calyx, which we can answer with a Libation. And yeah, we can't afford to play Turgrid first since we know about the Borrowed Time. Okay, Shieldred's reasonable, but just makes him sack the Pilgrim. If I go for Eldest Reborn, they sack Pilgrim. Yeah, them getting ahead with Calyx is pretty risky here. So, pretty mana inefficient, but I think we Libation. Audacity on the Pilgrim. That's fine. And then now either Eldest Reborn or Shieldred looks good. And I guess with a Calyx in the graveyard, Eldest Reborn looks pretty good to get going. And then we'll have Shieldred as something they can borrow time as easily. I guess we're also not transforming Shieldred anytime soon. 
So maybe would rather keep the Eldest Reborn as something they can borrow time, assuming they don't have other answers. So there's the borrow time. And a Warm Power Stone we can cast alongside Davriel, so that looks good. And then if we can untap with Davriel and activate it with Turgrid in play, that could be pretty sweet. Detention Vortex, discard it. And now they could replay Calyx, but it's not going to line up well against our Eldest Reborn. Planar Disruption, an answer to our Planeswalker. Alright, Turgrid plus Hopeless Nightmare it is. And hope they've got a permanent left in hand. Ethereal Armor, sure. Put it on Turgrid. And Davriel still triggers despite being shut down by the Disruption. Could put an upkeep stop to Sacrifice Hopeless Nightmare and Scry 2 before drawing, although Elzer Born will be a decent follow-up if her opponent presents any creature or planeswalker here. So I guess we still have the mana to do both. Maybe we find something better. Court official and a land, so don't need the land. Official could be reasonable. A little bit short of casting it and sacking it to tower to cast Eldest Reborn. So we're probably still going for Eldest Reborn here. So Kalyx doesn't get out of hand. And that's enough for a concession. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jodai the Unifier, so five color legends. And uh, yeah, having some removals important, so can give this a try. Turgrid can also be pretty effective against opposing fetch lands now. Turn one Ragavan, alright, good thing we've got the Fatal Push. Take it out before Moxheimer can tap for mana. And then Liliana can give minus one, minus one, so instead we'll go for a Celestus. And then, yeah, maybe get a Turgrid going before casting our other sacrifice effects. Slimefoot and Squee. Okay, so Eldest Reborn would just hit the Sapperling most likely. Let's go for Turgrid and hope for the best. Opponent could already cast Joda. For now a flowering to pump up their legends. And a Cold Steel Heart. Slime foot attacks, makes another token. We'll take it. And then we can both Rat and Soul Shatter to deal with Slime Foot. And I would rather Soul Shatter now as opposed to trying to Soul Shatter Joda, because then our opponent just sends it back to the command zone and we don't actually get it with Turgrid. Um, so yeah, seems fine. Ooh, nice. Chromatic Orrery. Don't mind if I do. So this makes five mana. So now we can still cast our Eldest Reborn alongside Soul Shatter. <laughs> yeah, opponent realized their mistake. Uh, yeah, I guess getting Eldest Reborn going is fine. And then we can Soul Shatter at instant speed in case we're worried about uh, Joda. And attack for four. Although, honestly, stealing slime food might be better. I'll just wait and see. Opponent has to discard next turn as well. So we could maybe empty out their hand with Liliana. Ren and Realm Breaker. 
Yeah, I guess we'll uh, soul shatter in response. And that's enough for a concession. All right, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Atraxa, Grand Unifier. This is going to be a pretty tough matchup, since their commander can just refuel their hand after we make them discard a bunch. That being said, this hand's keepable. Phyrexian Tower plays well with Rats and Informants. Can ramp out Turgrid and uh, maybe make them discard something juicy. For now, prefer ramping. Dark Ritual, alright. Opponent's got four mana here for Rusko, our good friend. Okay, so I've got a few options. Could go Raven Man plus one rat. And then Frexen Tower sets up Turgrid nicely. Could also use Frexen Tower to enable Revolt on Fatal Push. So that would be play a rat, sack it to the tower. Push and then Raven Man. Yeah, I guess it works. So, start here. Discarding an ass foretold. And then we'll get a bird. Which we can also sack to Phyrexian Tower. We'll still be a mana short of going Turgrid plus Informant. Playcrafter. So yeah, I guess uh, we'll play Turgrid, although I don't have high hopes for it surviving. Could have also activated Hive, but I don't think that's quite powerful enough here. Their opponent untaps with six mana at least, if they have a land. So next turn they could cast a Traxa. For now Signets. And a Supreme Verdict. Nice answer to all our creatures. And uh, yeah, now we're in a bit of trouble. Opponent will get to cast Atraxa, and we're just so far behind. Turgrid I can only replay as a Lantern. So I guess we go for Informants. Get our last card at least. Even though Midnight Clock will eventually refresh it. It was a land. So yeah, they still have 7 mana for Atraxa. So I guess we'll just pass as opposed to sacking Informant to attack for 3. And there's Atraxa. Opponent's got a full grip. And that's probably game over. Emergent Ultimatum they can cast. More Sweepers. At least Playcrafter deals with Atraxa, but the damage has been done. Just a little bit too much value of one card. Hopeless Nightmare. So if I want to cast Turgrid, I would have to sack Informant. Doesn't leave mana for Nightmare. So I guess we're forced to uh, Playcrafter and play Nightmare. And then, uh, pretty sure they can still cast Emergent Ultimatum. Which uh, is likely game over here. Could see a few extra turn cards, maybe the combo of Vorinclax with Liliana. And uh, Professor Onyx, Time Warp, Eldest Reborn. So these are all pretty bad for me. Professor Onyx might be the worst one, but... Yeah, I think I've uh, mentally checked out at this point. I 
Elders Reborn, get my Playcrafter. Could have maybe sacked it to my Frexian Tower to sack Nightmare and Scry 2. But I can't think of any card that uh, gets me back in the game. And there's Atraxa once again. Finding Teferi, key to the Archive, Heartless Act. So it's going to take the opponents a few turns to attack for lethal. But uh, yeah, I don't think uh, there's any way out. Find a swamp. All right, GG's. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Azusa, so green ramp. It's always going to be a tough matchup, but maybe we can strand them with an expensive card in hand and then steal it with Turgrid. So that's going to require a bit of mine acceleration. I've got the Mind Stone and the Phyrexian Tower, so yeah, sign me up. So I think the plan is to wait on Thoughtseize until we get Turgrid down. Innocent Blood could also be an effective one-mana removal spell. So next turn we can go Banner into Innocent Blood. Silvala will be our first victim. Okay, so next turn with a land we could already go Turgrit into a Thoughtseize. And if our opponent's got an expensive card in hand, we could reap the rewards. Timeless Witness, get back Silvala. Alright, let's give it a shot. Turgrid into Thoughtseize. And then we've got some more synergies coming up. Okay, how about an Ulvenbald Hydra? Rejuvenation I could take, but I'm not going to steal it since it's not a permanent. So Hydra makes more sense. And then what line do we get? And Nykthos maybe. Could also get a Sanitarium, which is pretty synergistic with Turgrid. So Mox Amber into Silvala. And then now we can clean things up with Triumph and Shieldred. If I activate Sanitarium, opponent could still hang on to Rejuvenation potentially. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess we start with Shieldred. And then Triumph. Might have wanted to tap a little differently, because if they sack Witness, I can get back a Thoughtseize. But then to cast it, I would need to sack a creature to the tower. Could also get something else, like an Innocent Blood. But yeah, opponent has seen enough, we can thought seize a rejuvenation, which they weren't particularly close to casting. And then uh, we should be able to take over, especially with a sanitarium. Alright, so we got to see our discard deck in action. And yeah, Turgrid's a pretty powerful commander if you can untap with it and actually get those synergies going. That being said, it's currently definitely in the hell queue, I would say. You're facing Rusko, you're facing Atraxa on the regular, which is a little bit above the power level of Turgrid, so it doesn't really compete with those decks. So I can't really recommend Turgrid as a commander, just because you're going to end up facing commanders that are way more powerful, and uh, it's going to be hard to really get Turgrid going in those games. So that's unfortunate, but uh, of course still remains a fun commander, especially if you can just play in some direct challenges against friends, although better be good friends since uh, you might lose them otherwise. So yeah, that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.